Okay, 17 and 18, we are just practicing uh, expanding and condensing. So in 17, we want to look for um, any of our exponents will come out in the front of the log, and we want to look for any multiplies and divides. So uh, the fact that I've got x minus 4 squared means I'm going to bring that out as 2 log of x minus 4. And multiplied next to it, I have that cubed root. Well, cubed root is an exponent of 1 third, so it should be plus 1 third log of y minus 1. And then we're dividing by that z minus uh, 4 to the fourth, so minus 4 log of z minus 4. All right, uh, number 18, we're asked to condense it. So one thing I would do is I just jump straight in there and write log, and I, I know there's a, a, a division in there. I know there's a fraction inside, and I know that because I see a, a subtract. So subtract means divide me. Uh, so then I want to go back and just bring anything else up as an exponent. So the 1 half is just the square root of x plus 4. Uh, the 1 third will kick up as a cubed root, but that's going to be in the denominator of y minus 2. And then we want to multiply that with, uh, this is, now because it's minus, that also tells me denominator of z cubed on that. All right, 19 through 22, these are all um, solving equation type things. Um, they should not require a calculator at all. Uh, as a matter of fact, I tell you, just leave it in exact form. All right, so uh, number 19, uh, I'm looking at a base of 2 and an 8. So I should be able to find a common base there. So 2 to the x minus 5, and 8 is 2 cubed. And the only way the left side will ever equal the right side is if the exponents match. So x minus 5 equals 3. So if I solve for x, I should get 8. OK. Uh, number 20, I'm, I'm amused. Just, just, I just like seeing students freak out about pi. Pi is a number, so we just relax. Um, the point being, we've got two different bases. I have an e and a pi. Those aren't the same base. So whenever they are not the same, I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. Now, on the left side, that's actually a property. ln of e to the x minus 4, that actually simplifies down to x minus 4. And uh, the ln of pi to the x, well, the fact that I have the ln there means that I can apply the property that allows me to take out the exponent. So x ln of pi. And what I'm going to do is I'm trying to solve for x, right? And i got x's on both sides. Um, I think it makes sense. Let me just bring the x over. Let me take that at x minus 4. Let's leave the negative 4 where it is. And we'll just bring over whoops, uh, x ln of pi minus x. And so from here, I'm going to factor out an x. Okay. And since I'm still trying to get x by itself, I'm going to come up here. So x is going to equal negative 4 over the ln of pi minus 1. So pi didn't really play a part. It's just a number. I just drag it around. So hopefully it didn't freak out too much on that. Uh, number 22, now we're going to go into log equations. So here I have uh, two logs, so I want to bring them into a single log, and that's going to be product rule. So the log of x times x plus 15 equals 2. And now what I want to do is I want to convert that into its exponent form. So I need a base. I don't see a base. But if you don't see one, that's really base 10. So that translates into 10 squared equals x times x plus 15. Uh, well, it's, that's just a good old-fashioned equation at that point. So uh, 10 squared is 100. And that's x squared plus 15x. I'll bring the 100 over. So I get 0 equals x squared plus 15x minus 100. 
and that's quadratic, so I am going to hope that it is something I can factor. So I need two factors of 100, uh, or so no way to get 100 that involves uh, ending up with a positive 15. And hopefully, after some guess and checking, hopefully you get 20 and 5, and it should be x plus 20 and x minus 5 in that factored form. And so for our solutions, uh, we get a positive 5 and a negative 20. Now, just want to caution you before you circle both of those and get all excited about it. Uh, we've got a rule with logs that I cannot take the log of 0 or a negative number. So I just want to double check that when I take the log of, when I put the number into the problem, that I'm not violating a domain restriction. Uh, and so when I put 5 in, I get log of 5. Okay, we're good. Uh, log of 5 plus 15. 5 plus 15 is 20. All right, so 5 works on both accounts. Uh, negative 20, however, uh, crashes and burns on the first one. <laughs> it doesn't work for log of x. So it can't take the log of negative 20. So it does not work. And our correct answer is just 5. So watch for that, because that, that is, I, I will put one of those on this, uh, on the exam. All right, number 22, uh, I've got a minus. Uh, so what I want to do is bring it over to the other side. So log base 5 of x plus 3 plus log base 5 of x minus 1 equals 1. Uh, and so now that I got them on the same side, I'm going to apply the same trick that I worked on for 21, where I'm going to bring them together as a product. So log base 5 of x plus 3 times x minus 1 equals 1. And then I want to convert to exponent form. So 5 to the first equals x plus 3 times x minus 1. Uh, now it's quadratic, and we know lots of stuff about quadratics. So 5 equals, I'll just multiply that out, uh, x squared minus x plus 3x minus 3. So that would be plus 2x minus 3. Uh, when I bring the 5 over, let's see, so x squared plus 2x actually gives me a negative 8. So then I want to try to factor that. Uh, what, 4 and 2 should be a plus 4 and a minus 2. So I get a positive 2 and a negative 4. Uh, and again, I want to go back and check it, make sure I don't violate anything from the original problem. So if I take the 2 in there, 2 plus 3 is 5. Okay, we're good. 2 minus 1 is 1. All right, so 2 works just fine. Uh, the negative 4, negative 4 plus 3, all right, so I already got a negative number. So negative 4 does not work, and it's just the x equals 2, just the positive one of those. Uh, so just be careful with that. All right, last part of the exam are application problems. Uh, I did give you a couple of formulas uh, that... You know, we're going to show up on the test there. So I realized in class we learned a couple of different formulas and practiced a couple of different things on the homework. Um, but you know, reality is you can't test everything. So just do pick a smaller sample of it. Uh, all right. So in this first question, um, let's see, find the amount of in each investment and then round to two decimal digits. So uh, we got $200 invested at four and a half percent compounded daily for five years. Okay, so compounded daily uh, means we're going to use uh, this formula here. And so it's A equals 200, 1 plus, uh, I need to convert that 4.5 to a decimal, so 0 0.045. Daily, there are 365 uh, days in a year. Uh, and then raise that to the 365 times 5. Uh, and so you want to go to a calculator and type that in. So 1 plus, so I'll kind of do that real quick here. Okay, so I get that you should have about 
250.46. Okay, now unfortunately there's not much I can do online virtually about that. So if you're not, if you're consistently not getting these numbers, um, I would shoot me an email or stop by an office hour and just make sure that you know how to use your calculator well enough um, on that. Uh, number 24, compounded continuously. That's actually that formula right there. Uh, so A equals 250E. And I need to take that 5% and make it into a decimal times 5. And again, you want to type that in your calculator. Uh, make sure you know how to find your E button and get all that to work. Okay, and I get uh, that it is approximately $321 and uh, one penny. You know, again, round to two decimal digits. Okay, number 25. Uh, we're given uh, the growth of a population. We want to know what the population size will be after 30 days. So they already give us this nice pretty formula. We just have to use it. So P of 30 is 25E to the point oh five times 30. Uh, and so we just type that in the calculator. All right, so I get 112.04. Uh, and then number 26, when will the population double? Well, if it's at 25 when it starts off, that, that's what that 25 means. That's, that's our starting off population. So how long till it takes till it reaches 50? Okay, so now we're solving uh, an equation of some type. So I want to divide by 25, so we get the 2. And then I want to take the ln of both sides, so ln of 2 equals ln of e to the 0.05 t. Now on the right side, that's actually one of our properties with dealing with lns. So that's 0.05 t. Uh, and so t is going to equal ln of 2 divided by 0.05. So again, want to type that in our calculator. And I get 13.86 uh, days, I think. Let's say context on what that t represents. Yeah, it does in days. Okay, so 13.86 days. All right, well, good luck on the test.